So the XC4 has been out for a while. Why are we only looking at it now? You shot an entire preview video by yourself for the embargo. I did? You don't remember? Oh, vaguely during the COVID thing. Oh yeah, but I mean, I couldn't smell or taste the camera. So how am I supposed to remember it? Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here and I am looking at the Fujifilm XE4 today, apparently not for the first time. I mean, uh, when I first got my hands on this camera, I was pretty out of it. It was just a short look. I mean, we promised you guys that we'd do a more hands-on look on the Fujifilm XE4 and that is now today. So let's get to it. Now, Fujifilm advertises the XE4 as having very similar styling to the X100 series and trying to borrow all the sexiness that goes along with those cameras. Uh, I think of it kind of in a different way. I mean, to me, this is internally very similar to the new Fujifilm XS10, but that camera definitely goes more into an SLR direction as far as looks and handling goes. Bigger grip, chunkier controls, lots of customizable buttons, PASM dial on top. This camera is definitely trying to go more of that minimalist way of thinking. I mean, it is pocket sized, it is compact, but it does have kind of a light plasticky feel to it. It is not weather sealed, unfortunately. It does feel a little bit slippery. There's no bump off on your thumb, so you can can buy accessory thumb grips and a front grip and that would help immensely. I'd like to do that on this camera, but of course then your price is gonna go up. Now I get that when you make a camera more of a minimalistic compact design, that means the control structure might get a little bit more minimalistic too, but I feel like Fuji's gone just a step too far here on this camera. I do like the front dial, it's fine, and it's got a push-in function so that it can do dual purpose, but yeah, okay, I've got my exposure comp on the top. It's a nice dial. I've got my shutter speed dial, that's great. And a lot of the sexier lenses do have an aperture ring, but I do still wish I had a back control dial. Some lenses don't come with an aperture ring and it would be really nice to have that to control that with, as well as just secondary functions like zooming in when I'm in playback mode. With the front dial, I have to toggle it by pushing to make sure I'm in the zoom function. Half the time, I was pretty much jumping ahead 10 photos or whatnot. So I found that just a little bit distracting. With practice, you'd be okay. But I also wish that I had more customizable controls. I mean, I did customize my AEL AFL button to do autofocusing, and I do have another custom button up top here next to the on off dial, but otherwise, very little to control. And I really especially miss having an autofocus selector to go between single and continuous and manual focus. I always found that to be a really useful hallmark on Fujifilm cameras, and it is sorely missed here. Now, one of my thoughts was, why not just stick with an X-T30 from Fujifilm? I like that camera a lot. It's light, it's fairly compact. I actually prefer the control structure, and I think it's also a sexy looking camera. The thing though is, although the X-T30 does have pretty decent face and eye detect, the Fujifilm X-E4 gets the latest firmware. So this focuses very much like a Fujifilm X-T4. So now we're getting excellent face and eye detect. More importantly, we're getting very decent autofocus tracking. And I've been using it quite a bit. I do like it, it works quite well, but it's still not quite up to snuff for that other uh, real, the, the tracking, the real time stuff that, I don't know, the, who makes that? Nah, it's escaping me, I can't remember. Now the displays on the Fujifilm X-E4 are actually pretty decent. I mean, first off, we get a 1.62 million dot panel. That's quite a bit higher than anything else in the competition like the Z50, the M6 Mark II, or the Sony a6400. And again, I like that it's nice and flush. It does give you that vertical uh, adjustment and it does give you the selfie screen as well. Now the EVF is pretty par for the course. 2.36 million dots, totally the same as what you get out of, again, Z50, M6 Mark II, or Sony a6400. I do like it. I will say though, I, I, mean, I like having that offset viewfinder. I am right eye dominant, so it works great for me. But even still, I find that sometimes my nose hits the screen and moves the autofocusing point. It's happened a couple times. And I think the real issue there is you just don't have much eye relief. Because although I do actually like having that offset viewfinder, it's so flush to the back panel there. So although it's nice to use, I just find that sometimes it feels a little bit cramped and a little bit claustrophobic. 
Now the Fujifilm XE4 does have a pretty decent touchscreen interface and I've actually been using it a lot more than I normally use on a camera. I mean, there's a couple of reasons for that. So first off, because we don't have a lot of custom buttons on here, you are kind of more dependent on using the custom controls with the touchscreen where you can swipe up, down, left, right. I've personally never really enjoyed using that, but it does give you some alternatives to get some customizability on this camera. Where I've also been using it quite a bit though is in playback because as I've mentioned, I find using the zoom control with the toggle function on the dial a little annoying so I've just been Mr. Pinchy Pants all over the screen to zoom in zoom out and swipe back and forth and I've been using it a lot more than I ever normally would. Now a sports and wildlife camera the Fujifilm X-E4 is not pretending to be but you know for family stuff for street photography I think you'll find it quite adequate. I mean basically if we're shooting JPEG only we're getting about 50 shots in a row before the buffer fills. If I'm doing RAW plus JPEG which is how I like to shoot more like 30 shots before it fills. So if I'm using 20 frames per second electronic shutter, I might fill my RAW plus JPEG buffer up in a second and a half. But if I'm shooting mechanical shutter and just JPEGs, you know, I'm gonna get about five seconds, maybe a little bit longer of burst rate, and that's pretty decent. Now, if you do fill up that buffer and you want to clear it out quickly, keep in mind that we only have a UHS-1 card slot here, just the single SD card slot. But again, that is par for the course against the other cameras that compare to this one. So just make sure you get as fast UHS-1 card as you can. All right, everybody, I'm going to make you a deal here, okay? If you haven't subscribed yet and you choose to do so by clicking that subscribe button right now, I will put a link in the description below to the sample galleries for this brand new Fujifilm X-E4, and I will let you download all the JPEGs and RAWs that we've shot, and you can edit them, and you can crop them, and you can put them on your phone as your lock screen, and all that kind of stuff, okay? And all you have to do is subscribe to the channel right now. So let's talk about the sensor in the Fujifilm X-E4. I'm starting to feel like a broken record because yes, it is the same excellent 26 megapixel APS-C X-Trans sensor that we see in a lot of their other current APS-C cameras. And it's an excellent sensor. Again, we like the color, we like the detail. Uh, it does have a very fast readout speed, so it makes shooting electronic shutter modes here at 20 frames per second quite feasible and you still don't get those nasty diagonals in the shot. So currently, with the X-E4, I only have one image quality complaint. Although I get all the excellent Fujifilm simulation modes, including Classic Neg, one of my personal favorites, this camera came out at the same time as the Fujifilm GFX 100S, and they were just released recently, and that camera has Nostalgic Neg mode, which mimics beautiful classic American-style film stock, and this camera came out at the same time, and it doesn't have it. And we're talking a little firmware file, just clickety-click, just check the mark, and it's in there. So hopefully they'll add that later but right now I, I want my classic and I want my nostalgia I want all the vintage feels and I don't get that hey it's headphone hair Jordan here to talk to you about the video capabilities of the Fujifilm X-E4 and it's actually pretty impressive considering this is a rangefinder styled body you're getting a lot of the good stuff we liked in the X-T30 and especially the X-S10 things like being able to record 4k up to 30 frames per second you get 1080 240 on this which is not available on the X-T30 and on top of that, we get the Eterna profile, which I just love if you don't like grading video. It's a beautiful straight out of camera profile, but there's still log recording options for you. Now, bear in mind, internally, this camera's only recording 8-bit, so I'd probably try and avoid log recording as much as possible. Now, because this camera body is so small, they don't have a lot of room for a lot of video-centric things, but I really like what Fujifilm's done where you can kind of build this camera up. No, it doesn't have a headphone jack, but you can plug the included USB-C to headphone adapter into there, get headphone monitoring. I was saying before I'd probably avoid using the F-Log because it's just an 8-bit camera, but out of the micro HDMI port, you can get 10-bit video into something like an Atomos Ninja. Now, the things that they can't do with adapters, unfortunately, are things like in-body image stabilization and a fully articulating screen. So if you're really into video, I think the XS10 is a much better buy for that reason. But if you're looking for a small, compact stills camera and you're gonna shoot a little bit of video, you could do a lot worse than the X-E4. So who's the X-E4 for? That doesn't work. <laughs> so who should buy the Fujifilm X-E4? I mean, I think the whole sort of compact, minimalistic goal is sound. Uh, you know, it is very light, 380 grams. That's like just over a fifth of a knocked. That's insanely light. 
And when you couple this with a 27 millimeter F2.8 that you can buy with it as a package, it's basically the same size and weight as an X100 camera, and it fits a similar purpose, but gives you the option to expand with other lenses. But at the same time, I feel like they've maybe gone a little bit too minimal on some of the control structures, and I think they should have molded some sort of grip into the body, because frankly, on this camera, I'm probably gonna wanna get a thumb rest and an extra grip, just so I have a more secure feel. Now, the issue there is now we start to build this camera up, not only in bulk, but also in cost. And then you get very close to the Fujifilm XS10's territory. That camera gives you IBIS. It is more complicated, but it is also more capable. So if you're looking for a camera that's lightweight and small, has interchangeable lenses and good autofocus, this could absolutely fit the bill and might be a good purchase for you. Hopefully this video helps you to decide that for yourselves. Now, do check, of course, in the description below, there is a link to our first impressions article on the Fujifilm X-E4. That's definitely worth a read. There's also a link to the sample gallery for this camera. If you're a subscriber, please do feel free to touch that. And if you're not a subscriber, don't you dare put your mouse cursor anywhere near that link. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll see you soon.